Oh, and good evening. It's August 16th, 2024, and welcome to another one of our Branches on the Vine with the Bible Project and, of course, the Sermon on the Mount series. So, my brother, Jim Warren, and I, we've decided to also take a peek at these videos, and we're going to have a chat about them, see what bounces up back and forth. So, in the week that we release our videos, we're going to do it with multiple episodes, uh, they'll begin usually on a Thursday. It'll cover my comments and thoughts on the ideas that those wonderful folks at the Bible Project, well, the ones that they put together for us, and on the other day, usually on a Friday, I'm gonna ha we'll have a discussion with, again, my very cool brother, and we'll bounce around our ideas and thoughts. So, welcome again this evening to our first discussion of Episode 7, The Sermon on the Mount, Praying to Our Father on the dusty feet. And of course, before we forget, if you do find these kinds of podcasts useful, then click the subscribe button. The reminders, they just help you. But also, if you think that these might be useful to other people, then click that like button, because that is the way that YouTube chooses to share these with more people if they wish. So again, this sermon is found in Matthew 5-7, through 7, and for me, it is the seminal moment in the teachings of Jesus, because this is his longest, deepest, widest teaching that we have recorded in all of Scripture, and it covers things that we, for sure, we like to talk about, yet deep down, we really have challenges living. So, Sermon on the Mount, Episode 7, Praying to our Father. <sighs> okay, Jimmy. What? Because th this one's loaded with, with things to talk about and, and mm -hmm. things to stretch. So um, take us somewhere. I could take us all over the place, but uh, <laughs> it's true. We'll, try to, we'll, 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 we'll try to go down this path. Let's have fun. Um, interesting, on uh, Thursday and Friday of last week, I uh, attended a leadership summit and heard some of the best speakers in the country talk about leadership. And one mm -hmm. of the speakers talked about the power of story and how it is mm -hmm. literally woven into the fabric of humanity that we are creatures of story. Mm -hmm. And in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus tells story after story after story, as he knows those are the things that stick. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the um, the peak here, which is the prayer. Mm -hmm. And he begins to, and this was, it's like, it's one of those things where I, I knew this, but I guess just the way that Tim and John talked about it, it was just a fresh perspective, um, reminder, I guess, mm -hmm. of how this wasn't just a prayer. This wasn't, here's, here's a model for you. You know, just, we'll just throw this out there, give you something to, to work with. Yeah. This was very much the essence of who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was the pattern of his life. Yeah. And it was a, um, I mean, if you look at the way the sermon is constructed, mm -hmm. this is the main point right. of all of it. Yeah, what we have Which, in, in Jewish line, it's called a chiastic st structure. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at it, and this whole sermon, it peaks here. Peaks or valleys. A actually, when you think chiastically, the weird part is it, it's like it sits sideways, right? So it the arrow comes in. And so it's that point where it goes AA, then it goes BB and C, blah, 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 blah. And it kicks in that s center. Right. So yeah, we, we are right at that at that everything points this way that's the point with hebrew mm -hmm. literary pattern is that go and that's kind of things that tells you when people go well was matthew was he writing hebrew i said well he probably was only because he's thinking in a hebraic pattern you know he's he's thinking that way and again aware of the hebraic patterns that we see in torah they're all over the place i mean there's a number of, of chiastic st structures that work out 
which is a fun topic. A anyways, but yes, so it's the peak or the side or the point or the bottom or whatever right. you want to do. Mm -hmm. It is the, everything points to this. Right. So you, you, like you said, it's more than, than just a couple lines of, hey, r repeat after me. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And whether he actually delivered it in the same order of all the messages and then the prayer and then the messages after, yeah. or whether yeah. it was constructed this way when it was um, cataloged and when, and when Matthew wrote it down, mm -hmm. we don't know. Right. Um, so whether or not you know, the, the listeners at that place would have necessarily picked up on this is right. the pinnacle or not, don't know. But obviously going back and, and the written word was very important to mm -hmm. Jewish culture. They had their Torah for generation upon generation upon generation, and they right. used that and, and revered it mm -hmm. so that when the New Testament writers were writing, there was probably that same sense of, we have these collections, they are going to be important. Yeah. And so, and, and even just the, the realization that Matthew, um, uh, specifically organized this to give it emphasis yeah. uh, says something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so it, it was it was a good reminder. It's one of those things I struggle with prayer. Um, it doesn't feel practical. It doesn't feel productive. It doesn't feel uh, efficient. You know, all the things that, that scream in me, you know, with regard to getting things done, it's like prayer feels like you're just saying stuff, but nothing's happening kind of thing. Yeah. Um, understand shows a little bit of the lack of faith I have in trusting that what prayer is doing might not be seen on the surface, right. but it's powerfully happening, you know, behind the scenes yeah. and Jesus was giving us a way to approach it like he did, mm -hmm. yeah. which was a recognition, number one, of who God is. You know, it's, it's the, the, as Tim and John both said, it's, it's the skyward look, mm -hmm. you know, we say heavens, but it's, it's the up, it's the yeah. acknowledgement that God is bigger than my circumstances. Yeah. And that right there, if we, we could spend this whole section just talking about that. Well, that's um, one of those one of those things when he's talking about this. That it's a good point that we take this. It's a good little launch. Jesus is not giving them new cosmology thoughts. He's not mm -hmm. introducing new science. This is mm -hmm. this is an ancient thought. This is an ancient thought. He's not thinking, you know, in the future that whatever's going to be. This is an ancient thought, and that is right. that. God, it was in the realm that was unreachable, and the unreachable is in the heavens or the skies, okay? And then us, man, on earth, this is our realm, our mm -hmm. location. We're not, we're not flyers, we're not in the sky, we're on the ground. And then chaos is the, the waters, our other uninhabited space mm -hmm. that is chaotic, that is uncontrollable, that has depths deeper than the highest mountain. And so they understand this. They're scared of that, of the chaos of the water and unknown the beauty of the heavens. But this is not a, a because uh, he's not like they're telling them, you know, because if you could really get up there, then you'd find God. Because mm -hmm. today we fly, we go up higher mm -hmm. and higher and above the clouds and da da da. And it, that's not God, you know. Yeah. So, what he's saying is deeper than that, but it's but it's simple in that hey, it's there. Yeah. That that visionary point, mm -hmm. that cosmology side that actually goes back pre-Hebrew. In other words, that whole cosmology about that is it predates them. That's mm -hmm. what gets noted and talked about in Dora was that look, you've you've heard it. They they know it. They they've come from Egypt. There's a he says, God says, let me just give you my spin on how that actually plays out. And Jesus is just reiterating this exact same point. Yeah. And it's interesting that early in the story of humanity is the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. which is man's attempt to think he can reach God. 
Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about God being in the heavenlies and the skies mm -hmm. and man's going to build a tower and think I'm going to get there. And what just hit me was, and we're still doing it because we have the planes now, right. you know, and then the stratosphere flights that they were looking at and then mm -hmm. launching into space to the moon and yeah. then deep, you know, Mars. And then even further, we keep going thinking yeah. we're going to hit something and we still haven't reached God yet. Mm -mm. No, which shows that's how. Yeah, no, no, no. And it, and it shows how what we don't get what we think we get. Um, mm -hmm. And it and it does. And then. And you get okay. Well, God's on a different plane, and I I, I agree. There's there's a setup, but mm -hmm. then it goes into a, a lot more that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, but this whole goal of just starting this off with there is a realm, mm -hmm. and you're here, and He's there. Yeah. So um, we're we're understanding the the um, the separation, right? That we're ag acknowledging it, and then we mm -hmm. get to how important, right? We get into yeah. the yeah. the the holy, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, give me your and, thoughts and, on I, yeah. And honestly, I, I want to back up just a step because he could have started it with holy God. He could have started it with you know transcendent above being greater than us, yeah. but he didn't. He started it with our father, which literally is a antithesis isn't the right word, but when you look at all of the other um, religions and, and worshipers outside of Christianity, um, a deity, a God, you know, whatever is, is always this unreachable thing. Right. And God's establishing right up front right that this is first and foremost relationship. Right. And he's modeling this language after what we understand of right. relationship father to child yeah. and what that represents. And and that to me was very powerful that he 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 intentionally calls God father and then launches into how then we acknowledge who he is. Yeah, I I, I love the 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 tie-in with the 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 mm -hmm. our side that he's putting himself alongside mm -hmm. of us in this mm -hmm. particular instance mm -hmm. where he's going hey our father who's there right mm -hmm. we're we're you're you're right we're at this point that this only in Judeo Christian and I'll the you know I, I'll even throw in the those that believe in the God of Abraham okay. Mm -hmm. So you have Muslims, Christians, and Jews, and so mm -hmm. we're we're in this group where this is this is part of that 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 part. What gets messed up are other pieces around in each of those, and and I get that, and those are developed theology over hundreds and thousands of years. But at that core, mm -hmm. that you're right, the only one that isn't that taught relationship that did it, which which made it fundamentally different than all of the other gods of of their time. Because nobody right. was an atheist back then; those didn't exist. Right. Everybody was loyal to something or another for for gain. There mm -hmm. was a reason for it for them, you know. Um, and so, you're right. I love how he makes this right off the bat very personal. But I think also in that he's like you were talking about. This is storytelling. Okay, so. Every element that he goes through here is going to take them back to a story. It's kind of right. like if you're talking a story like once upon a time in a land, da, 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 takes you somewhere. And then they'll say, and then you're at the castle of, and it's going to take you somewhere. And they're in the land of, mm -hmm. and it's going to take you somewhere. It's going to take you to these images and or stories, because we have images, we have a lot of pictures and stuff, but I'm not mm -hmm. compelled that they had tons of pictures around to do this. But they would have the imagery of the story. So he's going to take them back to creation. He's going to take them back to the garden. He's going to take them back to, well, and then we're going to get to yeah. where we need to to continue. So it does bring us some fun, you know, just something as simple as a prayer in the opening yeah. words already take us to places that we we seldom think about. Where do we go from here? Yeah. 
one of the speakers at this conference that I was at, Arthur Brooks, who's a professor at Harvard Business School, and he writes on the science of happiness. And mm. one of, it was really powerful. Um, mm. I, I'm looking forward to reading his book. Uh, one of the things that he said in their research and mm. the data with regard to happiness mm -hmm. that is irrefutable is that to be truly happy, you need to be part of something bigger than yourself. Okay. And I, there's a whole lot to that, but as he as he talked about it, mm -hmm. I shot back to mm -hmm. this prayer mm -hmm. and our father, which is already there's an acknowledgement of child to parent relationship. So there's you know dad's a bigger character in my life, yeah. um, but holy is your name, mm -hmm. and what holiness and, and that's why I love what John and and Tim were talking about with regard to holiness and it's distinctiveness to God and, mm -hmm. you know, characteristic of who God is, mm -hmm. is he, that is bigger than us, something yeah. we aren't, you know, yeah. innately. And so it's the acknowledgement of this larger than life God mm -hmm. uh, who has attached his name to us. Yeah. And now first he attached it to Israel and they talked about that and, and mm -hmm. what that represented. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, um, the, the other aspect of realizing that that's part of who we are also, mm -hmm. uh, and that acknowledgement of, wow, I've got this God mm -hmm. who is higher than I, mm -hmm. but yet relationally connected to me. And I'm part of this bigger thing than, than what my life is. And, Further in the in the prayer, we'll talk more about now. How does that impact my life, and what does that mean? Right. But it's first just setting up the um, the dynamic and the um, the realization mm -hmm. and and perspective setting that that does for me when I enter into praying to God. Yeah, you know it's interesting. So the the term holy is an English word we use for a Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. And so um, the a lot of Hebrew words and meanings and, and context is based in a, a uh, concrete foundation, touchable, tactile. It's a very mm -hmm. tactile language when you go back to it. Stories go back to, actually, because if you go back to Paleo-Hebrew, those are all symbols that are, it's, if you look back at the Paleo-Hebrew, which is always fun, it's more of a um, emoji type deal. In other words, you have words that mm -hmm. mean these pictures that mean something. Mm -hmm. And then you put the pictures together and it gives you something, right? You're going right. to get, you know, the, and so you put the, the little characters together and it's going to give you things. Okay. So, but what happens with holy is that we, from our churchy side, we, we tend to automatically throw that as a sticker on God. So um, one of the things that I like to do when I'm studying Hebrew or Greek or anything. It's more in Greek than in Hebrew, because Hebrew is still a very, um, not a lot of characters, no vowels, and short on words. So words get reused, words mm -hmm. are used, and they're flipped, depending on put, to, so that they're the opposite of what they are. There's all kinds of things that, that go with Hebrew, which are fun. Greek, on the other hand, is a very common language, meaning you can go back and it's going to have just a regular term to it. So we often, even when we do our, look, our Bible looks, and we look at Strong's, and we go, well, see, Strong says it means this. And I go, Strong's is not a dictionary. Strong's is, doesn't tell you what anything means. And this is right. the challenge that people get when they want to do this. You know this, that Strong's doesn't tell you meaning iota. It tells you when the translators chose a word to translate, they use this English word here. And actually, right. Strong's is based on, you know this, King James. Mm -hmm. That's where the strong numbers all come from. It comes from the King James Version. So any of that English work is still going to be this tweak. So it doesn't mean what the word means. So sometimes it's fun when you go to grab a Greek one, throw it in a Greek translator, and you go, oh, it doesn't mean, you know, mm -hmm. that. Um what the word that that we use we always tend we always put the cross for Jesus on the cross pick up your cross and follow me kind of scenario 
And then you look at the word and you realize it means steak or stick or walking stick. And you realize, mm -hmm. oh, well, it would be really more practical in the sense to say, hey, Jesus, pick up your walking stick. Follow me. You pick up your stick. It's a wanderer. That's the picture. He's talking to them there in that picture. We've just overlaid this stuff off backwards. Okay. So something as simple as this. So we get to holy. And so we throw it out. And I say holy is uh, unique or unique in purpose mm -hmm. and set apart, right? right. Only for this purpose. Um, the, the implements that were used in the tabernacle were holy because they were only to be used for this. Right. The bread that they cooked for the showbread table, right, was holy because its purpose was for that. It was no different in, in um, makeup. The bread was bread. The incense, mm -hmm. a different story. But the, but the bread was bread. And the plates, they held them on those kind of things. But the implements were that. There's, there's where you get holy. The purpose of the purpose of the tabernacle. Tabernacle is just a fancy tent. But it has a purpose. It's unique. It's set apart. It's holy. Now you go, well, how can people be holy? I said, that, that's, you, that just answers the question. If your purpose is set apart, that's where the Levites were right. set apart, <clears throat> right? They were holy as priests, right? But they're just normal people, like you and I. They just have that role. Mm -hmm. But you go back to the original plan from Abraham, and you go, you're set apart to be a holy nation, <laughs> right? So now it goes to this, and we get this, well, we can't be holy. because Yes, you are. That's, I think that's what, what we, we missed the point. Like you just said, God attaches his name. So the reputation is there. So now I'm set apart, I'm unique, I'm holy, we call this, and we'll give that reverence to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now it's worse, harder on us, because now that's our name tag. That's the name across the back of our shirt. You know, that's on our plate. That's why I. it bothers me when people put bumper stickers on their cars, you know, any Jesus bumper stickers on the stuff, and then drive the way they do. And you go, yeah. that you're bringing God's name into disrepute, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the point that you're, you're talking about here, is that God's attached his name. And, and I'm agreeing that, that we, as grafted in followers of, of God, right, that we thank the Jewish people for protecting what they protected to get us to what we got, right? This is really the whole point. And Messiah through this line. So he walks us down this, this line of things, and we now have his name attached to us. And we say it, and then we wear things around often. And part of me goes, just please don't wear that, you know? Um, Skip the t-shirt, skip the hat. If they can't tell that you're different without the hat or shirt or jewelry, it's worth yeah. a question. Yeah. It's worth it. It was one question. of the reasons I got the tattoo on my arm that says God follower, mm -hmm. because I wanted it to be permanent mm -hmm. on me. And a reminder, if I were to put myself in a compromising situation, I'm going to go, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is who I am. Yeah. I and yeah. I don't want to bring that into disrepute. Right. Um and the the fact that God put his name on Israel, put his name on us, um, like you said, yeah, there there's a set apartness of God when he puts his name on us, there's a set apartness of us, yeah, which gives us purpose. Mm -hmm. And that was actually one of the other key themes <laughs> that they talked about at this leadership conference right. was um, if you don't have a purpose, you're you're just, you know, you're going to do whatever, but you've got to be clear on what is your purpose. Mm -hmm. And for us, it is that understanding of our relationship to God <clears throat> and what that means in terms of our relationship right. to the people around us yeah. as well. Yeah. And we then roll into that next aspect, which is your kingdom here and there mm -hmm. should be the same. Mm -hmm. And so how do we live that way? 
yeah. to make that happen. Yeah, your your will be done. And so I, I, this is part of what I'm doing on my, on the other one where I'm I'm talking about this, and the the will be done part is an interesting level that will we'll we'll start here. We're probably going to be able to finish this, which will be a nice segue yeah. to take us to to next week too. Um, so we're asking for God's will, right? We're asking. We're we're acknowledging says as your will is there, right? But we already know, we were talking about earlier, that that mm -hmm. realm has had its own rebellion. We already have, because we're talking about the adversary. At the end of this place, at the end of this prayer, we're we're dealing with an adversarial thought at the right. end, right? At the end, we're going to get there. But there's, at, there, So there's a rebellion that already has it here. But I want, I want your will in both places, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to acknowledge... You, acknowledging a will is acknowledging that I'm going to be sub subject to it. It's mm -hmm. not just about who you are, where you are, you're in charge. Right. It's that, right. am I willing to subject myself to it? Right. That's different, okay? Because that involves words like uh, obedience, uh, commitment, uh, loyalty. Submission. <laughs> those are th And those are big words, okay? They, they really are in what we're talking about. So, so I thought to go back and I said, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about this. And I'm going, okay, so do we have places in Scripture where God has said what his will, things that he wants? So we get something as early as the garden with a very simple call that we get the first deal of God wanted something and we chose mm -hmm. uh, against it, okay? So then we get further along the line and we're down to this point and now he's setting up because of a covenant with a Abraham, right? He's he's made these set apart, these holy people, right? Set apart for a purpose people that mm -hmm. now he's walking out of and he's taking them to the other mountain. Like we talked about here, we're in the Sermon on the Mount here. We're going to go backwards because there's echoes in all of this that, that mm -hmm. goes back. So your will on earth. So where was his will expressed on earth? The other mountain. That's exactly where it draws a line to. Like you said, we get this little part of the story. Your will on earth as it is in heaven. So we go back. He says, that's where he said, this is what I want. And he mm -hmm. called it. And it was just, this is the kingdom of God. And he's talking about then this borderline. Because he said, in this kingdom, and this is what I want to, for you to behave. You In this kingdom... And then I'm good. I've given you this piece. Take care of it. Kind of like a garden a little bit. Take care of it. Do what you're supposed to do. I will protect you and put borders on the outside. Okay? Behave. Okay? And unlike the Adam and Eve, Adam and Hava story, right? We get the one-time screw-up and they vamanos, right? Yeah. We get this land where it's hundreds of years as it eventually goes to, look, you've so much so far that I'm pushing you out of the land. Okay? Same thing as a garden expulsion, pushing out of the land for our, our behavior. Now, I'm taking this by our behavior. I'm not going to say there. I'm going to say our behavior because today, if you're honest with ourselves, we're not better at all. Because people do the argument. I go, we're not better. We're not better off. Um, that for in in a lot of ways we might have some personal luxuries, but I don't not compelled we're better off. And so we have this piece. Then Jesus comes on the scene, and he takes them back there. And in this prayer, it walks us back to say, "Okay, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven." And in that story, there's a constant echoing of what was up there is down here. When we have the tabernacle, he takes Moses and shows him, this is the tabernacle here. And he brings it down there. So we have this constant bring back to here and the expectation to here. Yeah. So let's let's stretch this. I I, I want to take this as we so I don't want this is like cheating going in the story because we're not at that point yet in the story, but 
So we have this fun little part where we're we're at, okay, we just drew a picture of the garden misbehavior and push out. Mm -hmm. Then we have the land, our behavior, misbehavior and push out. Then you have us and our expansion and it's global borderless, okay, behavior and misbehavior. Okay, and then when we get to that new heaven, new earth thing, right? That's end of the book, Revelation, da-da-da-da, we get there. And it, trust me, that covers in the prophets as well in, in the Tanakh. But again, it's now about, okay, I'm going to have my land again. And if you're not part of that, I'm going to push you out. Whatever the push out looks like, we'll debate that point. Um, but whatever it is, it's the same result that God's model on this hasn't changed. What needs to change is our behavior and our thoughts and our hearts. Yeah. And I think when we see this fall out, this is what he's asking. He's asking for the heart of when they were still at the mountain and they had this peace mm -hmm. and he said, we will, um, you know, and, and, and do this. And he's going, okay, m my will on earth. So go back here, go back mm -hmm. to this and w walk it through. Because how do we know the next step? In other words, I, I love where you take this, because then the next step, and we'll segue to this. This is a good time. So um, we'll take it next where it's okay. Because when you get into your will, as it is in heaven and earth, great. Then you get in forgiveness. So you go, well, who defines what it is that's being wronged? Yeah. Okay. And you go, well, well you know, no, that's not innate. It's not. He actually has his will, a little bit of script involved, mm -hmm. that says, hey, here's where my points where I say this is when you've wronged somebody. Everything from as simple as, hey, if you have a house, and he's, and he's telling them this rule, this house thing, because they left Egypt, but he's given them an instruction while they're in a tent. In yeah. the middle of the instruction, he says, by the way, when you're in Not a house, settled. <laughs> and the guy's going, I'm in a house, I'm in a tent. He says, but when you're in a house, put a parapet, put railings on the roof of your flat house so you protect your neighbor. Mm -hmm. That's all about community. It's all about safety. It's all about protection. It's all about love and care for your other person, right? Yeah. We have these things that are there. If you dig a hole and you don't put a protective thing around it, and somebody's ox falls in it, in, you're yeah. responsible for it. Again, it keeps going back to these pieces. And I go back, to, why would the death of Messiah say, care for somebody that doesn't matter? When he says, love your neighbor as yourself, and he goes back and uses these instructions as the base, just what does that look like? It means put that railing up on your mm -hmm. roof. Um, Make your make your property safe where people can come and be, where they can be protected. And if you screw up, how do you have recompense for somebody? How do you do that? How do you make this point go? Because forgiveness is going to be involved. You're going to hurt somebody and somebody's going to hurt you. It goes both ways here. And that's what he says. And he said, look, you want me to do this for you. I'm going to base my forgiveness for you based on how you forgive. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, and it, interesting the order that he puts it because um, it puts the order of importance with what goes first. Hebrew likes to, to do that. It says, mm -hmm. your, your forgiveness of them is the basis of why I give forgive you. Yeah. It's not we ask God for forgiveness and then we're going to go back and say sorry to the other guy because... God has a couple times where he says, hey, if you got a problem with this, Jesus says it. If you have a problem with this, go talk to your brother. Get it right first. Get your hearts right first. Then come back to me. And I, I love that. And we'll probably need to pick up with this yeah. next week. Yeah. There's more to that and what that, because it feels like it's conditional and then that doesn't seem right. Right. But... There's more, so we'll yeah we'll, yeah yeah. We'll here. yeah Here's because a cliffhanger. There, There's going to be more. <laughs> yeah, yes, because there there is because you go. Yeah. Um, what what is the um, if we want that we want that for somebody else because mm -hmm. that's the other part we don't we want 
we want to just God. We just don't want him just on us, right? Yeah. We, we want him to take his justice yep. out on somebody else. And you go, God says, maybe we need to think again about yeah. that. So yeah, there's, there's a lot to do. So you can tell we're <laughs> talk an awful lot about a mm -hmm. few short lines in a, in a prayer, but then we realize when we're actually willing to take the time to really look at these scriptures again and look at them in context and where Jesus, as you said, as the storyteller, and he's mm -hmm. been telling stories on both sides of this. So, and it's all about those little snippets that he's saying that keeps drawing them back to their time that got them to here. You were chosen back then. Yes, it's been a bit of a mess up to this point. We're here now. And us, it's been a bit of a mess up to this point, and we're here now. Um, that that this is something that's going to go. So n if the teaching style is that way with this teacher, with this style, I think I think that continues down this yeah. very path that, that 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 we're heading in. So, um, yeah, good good start to this. Um, this Sermon on the Mount series is a um, is something very very cool, and I'm I'm uh, I'm really excited to continue following this series with you because um, this will continue to be a ton of fun and yet mm -hmm. I think challenging because a lot of things are going to come to mind. Um, some of it. Um, as we remember us, uh, uh, these characters, uh, what they're listening to and how this is affecting them in these teachings of Jesus and then how it's supposed to affect us. And I think that's part and parcel that we need to remember mm -hmm. that he's talking to them. So how does me listening in? I'm almost like John with N Nicodemus when he's mm -hmm. listening to the story that we get mm -hmm. our famous John 3.16 verse from. Um, sitting on the listening to this so we're we're yeah. peeking in on the story and how does this cause us to live and be different yeah so again thank you for w with us tonight we're looking forward to uh continuing th this discussion this is a ton of fun bro and thanks for with us tonight again uh with another edition of branches on the vine the bible project sermon on the mount and praying to our father on the dusty feet Thank you.